Hey, what's up everyone? It's State of Soccer and welcome back to another episode. Today, the World Cup preview train keeps moving. If you're unfamiliar with my channel, then you definitely don't know that over the past couple weeks, months now, we've been previewing every single nation competing at the November World Cup in Qatar. Wow. And we're gonna be doing this every single week until we talk about all 32 nations. This past episode, we talked about Ghana and today we're talking about another African nation, Senegal. And joining me today to talk about Senegal is a really special guest. If you're one of my many Canadian subscribers, then you definitely know Alex from One Soccer. He's really knowledgeable on all things Senegal. We're gonna talk about the team, chemistry, coach, World Cup history, ultimately how far he thinks they're gonna go in Group A, and some other things surrounding the World Cup. So if you're into that, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button. Let's get 200 likes today for this video. And with that, Let's get started. I want to talk about Senegal's World Cup history first. If you want to dive into that, yeah, I mean it's it's a short one to be honest. Yeah, I mean, yeah. despite being a, a great producer of talent, Senegal has always been, uh, you know, a lot of uh, some of the top French players in the the, the early two thousands, late nineties, where it came from Senegal. They just weren't really able to, to put it all together at the national team level. So their first qualification uh, was only in two thousand two. They did great there. I mean, they, they upset that that France defending 98 champions who, funnily enough, had a, a bunch of Senegalese players on it. They upset them famously and made it to the knockout stages in their first go. Uh, but then they didn't make it till all the way till 2018 uh, when, you know, Sadio Mane uh, led, led the team back along with some other uh, faces that I'm sure we'll, we'll dive into. Uh, 2018, just not as successful, unfortunately, got put in a very competitive tight group but only missed out on the knockout stages due to yellow cards after uh, you know they, they had a chance to play Japan uh, had a chance to play Colombia had a chance to play Poland they beat Poland uh, drew Japan and then lost to Colombia and just the yellow cards with Japan because they're tied on goals for goals against goals difference points it was a unique situation so so far two World Cups they've had a, a pretty decent history very talented squad. So uh, they'll, they'll be looking to take a big step forward in uh, 2022. And let's talk a little bit about the coach. Cause I, th I think the manager was featured on the 98 squad. Is that correct? Uh, Ali Usi say yes. He's been, uh, he was uh, the captain of the 2002 world cup squad. He's been around uh, for, for a long time. He just, uh, he ended up going to the, the first team, uh, the senior squad about, you know, almost a decade ago, he's kind of, been a revolutionary face for 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 Senegalese soccer because this is the best run of, of success that they've had I mean mm -hmm. the talents there uh, but kind of with him as leader a lot of players have committed to, to playing for Senegal a lot of players born in France for example who before might have ignored Senegal have committed a lot of players from Senegal are coming back to play for their national teams and he's kind of been a spearhead of all that he's very you know, he knows the program inside and out. He has a very solid base of tactics. And through those things, uh, Senegal have been able to accomplish things such as these historic back-to-back -back qualifications, winning their first African Cup of Nations as they did earlier this year after losing in the final twice on previous occasions, mm -hmm. one of the uh, one of which which he brought the, the team to in 2019. So it's really been a gold rush for, for Senegalese soccer. And LUC say uh, has, has been a big reason why. Now, Cisse's inclusion as manager, you know, 2018 World Cup, of course, now 2022. We saw him in the 2002 World Cup on the Senegal team as a player. Between 2002 and 2018, it's a 16-year gap, multiple World Cups Senegal missed out on. What happened in that time period? And, you know, what improvements were made, would you say, in the, in the Federation possibly in that time period? Yeah, I mean, there was a, there were a lot of changes. It just felt like there was a lot of talented players coming through Senegal, but not all of them would commit to the national team or they weren't able to put it together. You'd always see names like El Hadji Diouf playing mm -hmm. in the, the top, you know, the Premier League uh, with some big clubs. And then in the early 2010s, you saw Demba Bad making, you know, doing great things uh, at Chelsea, but it just felt like, you know, Senegal's weakness would always be putting together solid teams like their defense, especially in goal, which is funnily enough. Now you see some of their goalkeepers, yeah. they, they have, you know, one of the best in the world in Edward Mendy, but they, they struggled to produce goalkeepers, defenders. It was just, you know, a lot of talented attackers and, and midfielders. So I think under CSA one, you know, the big change has been structure 
and getting defenders to to commit those two things have, have been massive because it felt like the federation and the the organization would lack structure they'd go to tournaments they'd flame out they'd have all these great players and there was you know, even a time in the early 2010s where they straight up missed the africa cup of nations let alone wow. the world cup they weren't even qualifying for their, their own continental tournament. So it really shows how far they've come that they've been able to become such a cohesive unit. Uh, you know, all these top players, you, you know, you know, it feels like you like them now. It feels like they're a power, you know, just less than 10 years ago, they were struggling within their, their own continent. So it really took a lot of, you know, changes and implementing, implementing that structure to, to avoid such, you know, chaos that, they, that usually would reign over uh, the national team. Now, the African Cup of Nations, let's talk about that. You know, and the, the quality of this team. Uh, you said in 2010, or right around then, they didn't even qualify for the African Cup of Nations, and now they, you know, years later are winning the African Cup of Nations. Uh, what type of qualities does the Senegal team have outside of you know well-known players, like Mendy or Mane? Everyone knows Mendy and Mane. Outside of that, yeah, I mean they have a lot of depth, you know, especially at key positions, and they've really you know become a solid team defensively. I think that's mm -hmm. kind of been the the base off of which they. They've based their play. I mean, in goal, they've got obviously Edward Mendy. You know, and everyone knows what he can bring. Uh, kind of burst onto the scene late, but you look as well. They got great depth in goal. I think a huge, huge, almost you could say program altering player. Everyone talks about Sadio Mane. He's been committed since day one. But yeah. a Khalidou Koulibaly, French born, uh, has played at Napoli for a while. He's constantly kind of been flirting with uh, being one of the top center backs in the world over his time in Napoli. There have been periods where he's kind of pushed all the way up into that upper echelon. Well, getting his commitment over France was was huge because it gave Senegal a true leader. It's in fact Koulibaly, who's the captain, mostly not uh, not Mane, so it kind of shows how how much of a rock he is to to the team. Yeah. And then he's got a solid building cast around him. You see, you know, Abdou Diallo. Uh, you know, coming in uh, as of late, you know, Salif Sane was there for a while. There, you know, Ch uh, Cheku Kuyate also plays sometimes at center back, despite being more of a midfielder. And then you go up into the the, the midfield. They've they've always kind of, you know, as of late, been building some solid, you know, defensive midfielder depth. You look at Idris Aganagé. You look at Nampolis Mendy. Some of these other players that have have, have you know risen. And then uh, up front, there's the obvious quality of Sadio Mane, of course. But then you got your, you know, Keita Balde and Ismail Assar. Some of these other young talents who have kind of risen up and, and given a, a core team. So it's not just Mane and Koulibaly. If you look at the, the the African Cup of Nations, it was really a team effort. I mean, Senegal itself, Mane didn't score more than three goals. No one on the team scored more than three goals. But every game, they would grind things out defensively, score a timely goal. And it was really cohesive unit, which was kind of impressive. When we saw that, when was, when was it recently? Uh, when we saw it was the FA Cup final. Uh, Mendy versus Mane, you know, in, in the free kit, you know, in the um, PKs, what were your thoughts running through your head? I'm assuming you were watching that match. You know, was that, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing everyone in Senegal was going crazy at that moment. Yeah, I mean, for, for, for everyone in, in Senegal, it's a big chance to see yeah. top players on the top stage. And that's that's what they they live for. I mean, I remember back when it was less off, uh, you know, less of a, a an occurrence that we see a lot. Cause, I mean, now it's been a bit of a gold rush. You see, you know, mm -hmm. Sadio Mane winning the Champions League in 2019 or, or it's, yeah, 2019, Edouard Mendy winning in 2021, et cetera. Like this sort of stuff's become a common occurrence. But I remember back, you know, in the early 2010s when it was just kind of Demba Ba. He was like an idol there because everyone there they watch the Premier League. Everyone yeah. watches these sorts of big games. They watch Chelsea. So to, to have Demba Ba playing for Chelsea, it was it was like he was a, a god there because everyone would want to play. You'd, you'd go play, you know, FIFA. Everyone wanted to to, yeah. to fight just to play <laughs> Chelsea just so they yeah. could have a chance to to use him. So to have games like this, it's huge because now there's kind of. I mean, more variety in terms of the teams. It's not everyone just, you know, going for Chelsea. Everyone, obviously, they'll like Liverpool with, with Mane or they'll like Chelsea with Mendy. And, you know, there's a whole host of other clubs with, with more Senegalese players. So it was, it was a huge moment to see two Senegalese players in such a big game step up to the occasion. I think that's just kind of, it's given pride to, to the soccer mm -hmm. culture. Senegal's always been a soccer country within its country, always, you know, popular sport, et cetera, top players. But to see them perform the, the way they have, it's it's a huge moment of pride. And they're going to need some pride because this, this group A, I, I don't think it's necessarily the toughest group, but we're looking at it, you know, it's Netherlands, it's Qatar and Ecuador. Um, 
obviously I would say off the bat, you, you could argue, you know, Netherlands is probably the favorite on paper. However, I've been projecting Senegal from what I've read about Senegal making a deep run. Uh, if you'd even want to consider Senegal kind of like the dark horse of this World Cup, but I think they're somewhat being overlooked. Uh, Qatar, of course, is hosting the tournament. And then Ecuador, there's a lot of unknowns, but they did so great in qualifications in South America. Very young team. How do you see Senegal stacking up in this Group A? I think this is a very solid group for 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 Senegal. They got mm -hmm. you know thrown in as a pot three team, so there's always a risk that you drew like a combination of like a France and a Netherlands or a France and a you know Germany or something like that, which is always you know a fear. But I think to get the host Qatar, it's a bit of a poison pill, I suppose, because you know the only team not to yeah. make it out of the group stages has been with South Africa in 2010. So it's a very, and Qatar is a very good team, in my opinion, super underrated. So I don't think that's a good thing, considering they'll be at home, they'll be familiar with the the elements. Uh, but I think, you know, as, as pod A teams go, you would take Qatar over some of the, the bigger nations. Uh, you look at the Netherlands, I mean, a, a team that's on the rise, a team in, you know, a team in transition after missing out on the last World Cup. So it, I think that's going to be a very solid test. Ecuador for me is the wild cards because they look so good in the, you know, arguably the toughest qualifying region in the world. Yet, like you mentioned, they're so young. They don't necessarily have that uh, experience. So I'd say Senegal certainly has to back themselves being mm -hmm. favorites given that, funnily enough, they're the only team in yeah. this group that were at the last World Cup. So they have a bit of experience. They have the pedigree of, of some of their top players. Um, so I think overall, if you look at those things, there's no reason why they, they can't make a run, especially, you know, some of the other factors, mm -hmm. the weather. A lot of people talk about could the weather play a, play a role for, for certain teams. Senegal is used to playing in some of these hot, muggy conditions. Some of their qualifying sure. games were played in some very tough, tough conditions. The AFCON as well was played in tough conditions. All of those factors, they're, they're used to it. So I think given that they've been there before, no reason why they can't uh, dream of top two. And even if, if all things go right, finish top of their group and get a, a good knockout round uh, draw. So if, if they do finish top two, it's the way too early prediction I'm doing with every single guest on my show. Where do you think, how far do you think the Senegal team could go realistically if they get out of this group A? I think if we're talking talent on paper, there's no reason mm -hmm. why they can't make a run to say the semis. I think they, they, if you look at some of the, the 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 talent they have at each position, you look at core positions in goal. You have you know Edward Mendy, one of the best goalkeepers in the world. You know that that's a, that's a huge position. You look at center back Kalidou Koulibaly, one of the top players in the world. Sadio Mane up front, one of the top players in the world. You have that sort of top end talent. Sure, you have sure. the depth. You have the coaching on paper. That's you know you look at some of the teams that, that made the the you know the final four recently. Say look at 2018 in Croatia, you know it's, Croatia had a top midfielder. They had some you know top well top midfielders. They had some some really solid depth at the other positions. They made a run. I think Senegal could 100% emulate that. What it's going to come down to, it's going to be you know the psychological part. It's going to be the you know the African teams, Asian teams, teams that aren't European or. or uh, uh, South American just haven't done well. I mean, there's a reason why they haven't won. And that one, a team outside of those two continents has never won. It's rare you see them make the semifinals. It's going to come down to psychological edge and playing like a top team, believing like you're a top team. I think that's going to be the interesting thing. Because I think we've seen it from Senegal. Mm -hmm. Typically in past AFCONs, for example, they'd always be such a good team and then they'd flame out or you know lose a game where they really shouldn't lose. Whereas now this last AFCON... They hardly looked threatened. It felt like up until the final, they just took care of business. Even when the, their backs were against the wall, even in this World Cup qualification, you draw Egypt in the last round of World Cup qualifiers, yeah. you lose, you miss out. They just took care of business. Even if it took, meant going to a penalty shootout, it meant scoring some clutch goals. So if I think if they can keep that mentality, given their talent, uh, there's no reason why they can't make a run to, to the semis. So it's going to be all about delivering on that. Now, what is Senegal doing to prepare for the World Cup right now? You see international friendlies going across, you know, across the world right now. What, what is Senegal doing as far as friendlies and any competitive fixtures upcoming before the World Cup? Surprisingly, it's pretty quiet. No, actually, a scheduled okay. friendlies uh, for this window. So they, are, I guess, you know, that is typically something we see from them uh, after a long season. And, you know, they have a very familiar group. So, uh, you know, even, for example, for AFCON, you know, qualifiers are always rotating their squad. They, they're giving guys a, a bit of a rest. So it's just two games this window. They have uh, African Cup of Nations qualifiers. Uh, tip, you know, they might 
rest some guys, bring in some new faces. So uh, it'll be a pretty quiet window for them this time around. And I think in September, they'll then ramp things up, get the A squad together uh, or full A squad. Of course, they'll have as many top players as they can get in, but uh, they're typically actually quite lenient with giving players rest. I guess it helps when you've had CSA around for almost a decade. You're not so necessarily concerned yeah. about what certain players look like together or, or, or com- competition for, for spots in certain cases. So uh, they'll, they'll get the A squad together in September, run, run some friendlies, and then uh, just hope that their their big guns are in form in, in the fall. That's going to be the challenge for every team in this World Cup. Form usually now at the end of a season is going to matter, but now the guys who can get out the the, the, the blocks fresh and, and, and on fire and, and rolling will, will, will be what matters. So uh, September is going to be an interesting window for them. I'd have to imagine, mm-hmm. given their status, they'd want to book a top team, and I'm sure that some top teams would love to play them because they they'd pose a unique challenge based on how they play, based on the talent that they have, and uh, from there they'll they'll look to to capture whatever form they can take from September into to the start of the World Cup. Because they, they as the team in Group A, you start right away. You have no time to it's with true. how short it is. It's like a week between the end of the club seat or the club break, sorry, in Europe, and then the start of the tournament. They're, they're going to have the least amount of yeah. time to dive right in. So September is going to be huge for them. With the Premier League, we have the transfer window. I believe it opens up on June 10th, and the first match of the season is August 6th. Sadio Mane is rumored to potentially go elsewhere. Uh, do you see that happening, and what type of effect do you think that would have on, on him as a player going into this World Cup? I mean, the writing's on the the, the wall, certainly, with, with yeah. him and Liverpool. I mean, pretty, pretty, you know, cryptic messages. I think, obviously, he loves the club, but looks like, you know, might just be coming to end with the whole, you know, Mohamed Salah contract, etc. So if he's going elsewhere, it's going to be interesting. Uh, you know, looks like Bayern Munich is the, the favorites. And I think, given his pedigree, he'd like to think that he's going to go start there, especially with Lewandowski uh, out the door. So I think as long as he can find some form, Sadio Mane's always kind of been you know, especially uh, ever since he's gone to Liverpool, he's always kind of, you know, been focused. He's always been on top of his thing. Yeah. It's not necessarily someone who lets external factors get to him. Like even if he's struggling, he'll he'll find a way to to put that aside. So I think as long as he gets playing regularly and finds form, he shouldn't be too much of a worry. But it is always something to to wonder because what if he doesn't adjust to Bayern or what if you know the the Bundesliga, you know the the pace of the league affects him or the you know the new just being in a new country because he's lived in France. He's you know he's obviously born in Senegal. He's lived in England for a long time with his Southampton and now Liverpool days. It's an adjustment. It's always an adjustment mm-hmm. to, to go to a new country, new language. So uh, I think as long as his, his soccer side is sorted, he'll be he'll be fine. But I mean, maybe if the soccer isn't well, you, you add in all the the adjustment and whatnot, it'll, it'll, it'll get to yeah. his head. But uh, personally, knowing him, I don't think it will. But you always do have to be careful of that. And my question for you, I, I didn't really I, looking at the way that the groups are laid out. Is there any chance in the latter stages of, of the World Cup that Canada and Senegal could play each other? I'm not. I'm not is, is that possible? Um, I'm not hundred percent sure. Yeah, was, they're kind of on the opposite they're sides. On the opposite the, sides, yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll t- try to take a quick look at the how the bracket lines up to to see. And I will ask you. Game. I will ask you who you would cheer for. But I'm curious if they were to match off and match against each other, who you think would pull off the victory so it looks like if it were to happen it would be in a semi-final so i mean okay. if they make it that far <laughs> that would be uh <laughs> that would be ecstatic for for for, for, for both yeah for both teams but i mean i'd certainly i'd, I'd default to canada naturally okay. just because you know that's you know you grow up that's where you you, you, you watch them play but I'd, I'd honestly just be neutral i'd kind of just be <laughs> watching and, yeah. and enjoying the spectacle <laughs> of it of it all because I mean, it's hard to, to cheer for one. That's why I'd say I default to Canada, as in, like, if you'd have to ask me, you know, like, arms tied behind my back, uh, yes, I'd say uh, I'd say Canada. But honestly, I'd say it's it would be 50.5 to 49.5. It'd be very, very even split. And I think it would be great just to, to see them play each other in such a high-stakes environment, see how far both programs have come. Because I've kind of, in a sense, for me growing up, both of them haven't really been that good, especially when I was younger. It took yeah. you know till t- this year for Canada to make it. Senegal took till 2018 to make it because I was only you know I was two years old when they made it in 2002. So just to see them become the nations they are with top players uh, playing at the top stage, it would just be awesome to to see them play in such a game. 
Well, you heard it here first on State of Soccer. Not that we're predicting it, but if it does happen, we're talking about it. Semifinal matchup between Canada and Senegal. Um, my last question for you, Alex, is where can you know these viewers find you at? Awesome. Yeah, you can just uh, find me on Twitter uh, at Alex Gange Ruzik. Uh, that's pretty much uh, where you find most of my work uh, with One Soccer, do some writing for the Canadian Premier League, uh, some other podcasts and whatnot. So most of my work is centered around uh, Canadian soccer, but uh, I'm good for some uh, some Senegal tweets, especially when they, they play. So I'll definitely uh, have, have that up uh, there, but it'll, it'll all be on my uh, Twitter. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us today, Alex. Awesome. Thanks. It was a big pleasure. And you guys, that does it. So uh, you heard it here. I, I think we can both agree that Senegal should make it through. I think we're, we're kind of predicting that right now. We'll see a lot of talent for Senegal on all sides of the ball. Looking forward to seeing them in Group A. With that, stay tuned for next week. Right now we have Argentina scheduled for next week as the preview for the World Cup train keeps on moving. This is State of Soccer TV. I'm Brian McDonough. Everyone take care.